Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I have a new layout for Pink Fresh Studio and I'm going to start this page out with one of the new stamp sets that you can find in the store. This stamp set is called Keep Going and I'm going to pair it with the Let's Stay Home collection, which is the new one. And I'm going to make a mixed media background using several of the blue colors of the little ink mini cubes. And here are my pictures. These pictures crack me up. Whenever I'm on my, my desk working, my youngest daughter likes to creep up behind me and she'll stick her little hand around and grab my face and basically just come around and start attacking me with hugs and kisses. And it's the cutest thing ever. So I managed to grab my phone and snap some pictures of it. And so uh, I'm gonna keep the photos there in the uh, little photo strip instead of cutting them apart. That's kind of the idea that I've got with the pictures. So I'm going to use some thick, smooth, white cardstock as my background. And I'm going to go ahead and just coat the whole thing with some clear gesso. And this is just going to prep the paper for any type of mixed media that I add to it. And it's going to allow me to blend and smudge colors together and uh, things like that. So I scrape the gesso on, let it dry completely. Everything's still very smooth. And I'm sorry about my old stamping block there. I've had that thing over 10 years. So it's, <laughs> it's been through some layouts. But um, I've got the big floral stamp from the Keep Going stamp set. And I'm just going to basically tap these little ink cubes on top of the stamp, flip it over, and stamp it down. And so what I'm going to try to do is kind of make a nice, interesting watercolor slash floral looking pattern paper here. Uh, this is a fun way to kind of just make your own paper. So I'm using several of the blue shades here. And then this is what is so awesome about using gesso. Watch what happens when I use my little water brush there and uh, squirt a little bit of water on top of this ink. It just instantly starts to kind of melt and blend and I'm able to just create some watercolor with it. And these are just ink pads. But uh, if you know, if you don't use gesso and you stamp it down, it's basically gonna, you know, soak right through the paper and the, the stamp is there because that's what ink pads are for, you know, they're meant to stamp. But since I have the gesso, it doesn't dry right away. And so I'm able to reactivate it with some water and it just kind of starts to spread and blend and it acts like watercolor. And I absolutely love how this turns out. This is a really cool effect that you can do. And I'm just going to keep going. You can kind of see here how this background is going to take shape. And the colors that I'm using, these are all Pink Fresh Studio little mini ink cubes. I'm using Storm, which is one of the darker blue colors. Sapphire is another one of the, the bolder, darker blues. And Blue Jay. And then the lighter colors are sky blue. That's the kind of the aqua color that you see a little bit there over to the left. It's really light and pretty. Also, ocean breeze is kind of a light blue. And then summer shower. And you can find all of these in the store. So I'm kind of overlapping and then, uh, you know, using a couple colors and then just coming in with the water brush. And this little water brush, I got this at Michael's a long time ago. I know they still have them, but you add a little bit of water into it. And then when you're, you know, painting or brushing, you give it a little bit of a squeeze and just a little bit of water comes out the, the end of it. And so you can add a little bit of water or a lot of water. And it's awesome because you don't have to keep dipping your brush back into, you know, a jar of water or a cup of water. And it's just a different, a different tool to use and I enjoy it. I haven't used it. I think I've used it a few times in the last month or so, but I used to use it all the time and then it went missing. I don't know which one of my children hit it, but I finally found it. And so I decided to start using it again. And yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's a nice way to control how much water you want to add to your, to your project. So I'm not trying to fade out all of these flowers. I, I want a lot of the floral shape and leaf shape to still be visible, but I still want it to look kind of like it rained on my layout and smudged some of the ink. I love that effect and I just think it looks really, really cool. And so anyway, I took some time to do that and I think that looks really neat. I love this kind of background. It looks like this could be a pattern paper that you could buy, you know, and all I did was stamp and smudge and you know you could do this with any color scheme 
whatsoever. You could do this with, with any stamp. But um, I think the key to, to get this effect is the gesso. And so once I brought the photos back, I decided that I wanted a little more of the darker blue watercolor effect above and below the photo strip. And so this is another way to use the little ink pads. I just stamped them onto my stamping block there, watered it down, and I have instant watercolor. So another idea uh, of how to use stamp pads other than, you know, just for stamping. But yeah, I was able to just add a little bit to the, the stamping block there and dip my little water brush in it and instantly add a little bit more color. And I do want to point out something I just realized. I think I told you a complete lie in the beginning. I think I did. This is not thick, smooth, white cardstock I'm using. This is textured cardstock. So um, yeah, I usually use the smooth, thick for my backgrounds, but this is textured and it's still from Basil but it's it's definitely got texture on it and it actually works really really well even though i added you know all the the, the gesso and all of the stamping and the water it worked great but yeah i kind of wanted some texture on the background with the stamping because when i stamp on a background like this i'm not necessarily looking for the crispest is that a word probably not the most crisp image when I stamp for a background. I want it to look kind of messy and I want it to look, you know, distressed. So the texture in the cardstock is going to help that along. And so that's why I wanted to use the textured cardstock. Crispest. I don't think that's a word, but you know what I meant, right? Definitely. So now what I'm doing is going through all of the embellishments for the Let's Stay Home collection. I'm pulling out stickers, puffy stickers, cardstock stickers. I'm going to rummage through the die cut pack here and basically just looking for anything that goes with my theme, anything that's blue. So I've got all that kind of stuff picked out. And then I noticed this really pretty light pinkish, purplish, lavender-ish color. And I thought, you know what? That would be really pretty mixed in with these blues. And so just like that, my monochromatic blue layout is going to have another color mixed in. So I uh, went back through all of the things and chose a couple more things that were that really, I don't know what color that is. It's like a light purple, but it's also got a little bit of pink to it. Um, so I decided to add a little bit to the background. So I went back to that stamp and then I pulled out another stamp color. This one is called Soft Lilac. And you know what? That's a great way to describe this color. That's what I'm going to call it. Lilac. And I just added a little bit of stamping right on top of what I already had. And this worked out great because the bulk of the background is already dry. And um, I'm able to add this, this other color on top of it and then even come back in with my water brush and smudge it around a little bit. And this is a very soft color. Uh, I want it to be subtle. Uh, it, the color is going to be repeated on the layout in a couple places, but um, it's definitely not as predominant as the blue. But yeah, I just wanted a little bit of that color on the background, and I think that makes a big difference. And Again, this was not how I intended to do this color scheme. I was 100% with just blue. And then just like that, I saw that little heart die cut that's over to the right. It's a die cut of three hearts. It's the, the royal blue, the light blue, and then that soft lilac color. And I thought, that color's so pretty next up to the blue, or right up next to the blue. And it changed my mind right off, right off the bat there. So... That's how quickly your ideas can change. And I say if that happens, just go for it. Um, I'm going to sort through some of the 6x6 six six paper pads here and just pick a couple things to layer behind the photos. I'm definitely going to use that big envelope that's the blue with the little circular clasp on it. I love those envelopes. And I like to use those as layers, just like this. So. I'm going to use that. I want to use that love piece that I cut from a pattern paper. And I definitely want to use the homemade memories. And that's going to be my main title. And it fits perfectly right at the bottom of my pictures, I think. Because I like the way the, the homemade word kind of overlaps the bottom of the pictures. But it's not covering up 
too much of the pictures. Um, I do love to overlap things on top of pictures, but not if it's going to cover up something important. Like that little circle that I just put on the top of the pictures, the way the pictures are, there's a dip. You see how there's a between my two heads there, there's just some empty space. That's perfect for a little embellishment to overlap. And so that worked out great. All I'm doing here is trimming off some of the white border around some of the die cuts. And then this is another die that I'm going to use that's new that you can find in the store. This is called Frame Builder Botanical Circle. And I went ahead and did this off camera because I didn't think you would care if you saw me die cutting these on my little cuddle bug machine. But these are really pretty because you can make circles out of these. There are two different dies. There's one um, with flowers and one with just leaves. And I went ahead and cut four of them using one of the uh, pattern papers that has a lot of that soft lilac color. And I just wanted to, to tuck them in in a couple places and give me something else of that that lilac color because, um, I'm like I said, most of this is blue. Um, but I wanted some more texture and some more interest. And I had this dye and I looked at it and thought that would be a really cool thing to to add because that love piece is a circle. And so I thought, you know, it, this would be kind of another circular type of element. Then at the bottom of the layout, I didn't want to add any mixed media and I didn't want to leave it just solid white. And so I thought I would just kind of make kind of a, a mix and mash, mix and mash, mix and match of a couple things. So I just cut some crooked strips from some of the six by six papers some of the darker blue and some of the lighter blue, and then just add a couple of embellishments, stickers and things down there to create a little long horizontal cluster, so to speak. Nothing is glued down yet. I'm going to start to add in some thread. You know me and my thread. I've got all the colors that match. I've got the blue. I've got the lilac color. I didn't think I had the lilac color, but I, I found it. So that was... A pleasant surprise because it's a unique color like I said it's it's not purple but it's not pink it's it's definitely its own color but um, I'm gonna tuck in some blue right there at the bottom kind of under the title and then some of the lilac up at the top right corner and then some of the lighter blue kind of underneath right there And um, before I start to glue anything down, I want to edge distress a couple things. And so I'm going to use my little edge distressor tool. I've been getting a lot of questions about this little tool lately. I've had this for years. Uh, it's from Making Memories. And I got it at Michael's. I'm talking probably 9, 10 years ago. I mean, a long time. But I know other brands have those. If you just search, you know, in, in any online scrapbooking store or, um, you know, Amazon, if you search edge edge distressor or edge distressing tool I know you'll find one um, but this is just one I've had for forever and it works great it's got a little blade in there and you just run it along the edge of your paper and it kind of uh, you know roughs it up a little bit it makes it look a little weathered and distressed and it can totally change the look of a piece of paper or an embellishment or anything like that just you know, depends on if you like that look or if you, you know, you don't, you don't have to use that. But, and I'm just using my fingernail right there. <laughs> you can still use your fingernail. You can use scissors. Um, that little strip of paper was so thin that I don't think I could have got it in there very well. But I wanted a, a, a touch of that lilac color at the bottom there on the left. So I just tore a teeny little skinny strip. And then I'm going to pull in another one of those dies that I cut. And then I have a little puffy sticker of a little house and um, another circle chipboard sticker. And now I'm just going to start to glue it all together. Um, nothing. Yeah, nothing's glued down. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down all the layers behind my picture and get that situated. Sometimes I forget to distress the edges until it's glued down, but... And I don't, I don't run that thing on every single piece. Uh, it just depends. Depends on my mood. In this case, I think I distressed all the edges. Um, I'm going to pop everything up. Well, the photos anyway. I'm going to pop that up with some adhesive foam. And then start to glue in some of the die cuts. 
and get all that situated. I really love how this background turned out. I was so excited to see how well the um, the inks blended. And I, I blended the inks before. I've used them with watercolors, but I don't think I've actually stamped with them and then blended them like this. So uh, yeah, highly recommend it. Worked really, really great. All I'm doing is putting everything together, gluing it down. Took a break and I decided to do some stitching with the lilac thread. So I just did a little bit of, of um, detail stitching right there above the photos and then down there on the bottom little strips of paper. And then I decided I wanted a, a little pinch of the darker lilac kind of over here to the left because I've got a lot of the soft light lilac and uh, like on the love circle you know the circle itself is the light lilac but the word love is a little bit darker so these little strips here that I'm adding in are some of the darker color and they're just very very slight but they make a big difference I like that you can you can see those details and I, I love adding in details like that that um, you may not see when you look at the page the first time but the longer you look at it or if you go back and look at it again you notice these tiny details that you didn't see before and uh, I think those kinds of layers are those kind of details where you you just kind of you see it but you're not staring at it it just it just makes sense does that does that even make sense it makes sense in my head uh, just those little details that make all the difference and you know you're looking at the layout and you don't really know why something looks right but it just does okay I'm gonna quit rambling because this is making sense in my head <laughs> but it may not be making sense out loud uh, I popped up that little um, three heart puffy sticker and then I use the actual die cut of the same thing down here in the bottom cluster and I am going to add some thread behind the little stickers down there with the lighter blue thread because I felt like there's um, that's just that's just the color that I felt like needed to be down there. I'm going to glue that down, and then I had to have the word lockdown on here because this was right in the heat of lockdown when all of us in our house were going crazy because you know we couldn't do anything, and so um, you know. I'm using the Let's Stay Home collection and we're talking about homemade memories and so I've been dying to use the word lockdown or quarantine on a layout and so we're going to use the little mini alpha multicolored stickers in different blues and then the little pink sticker or lilac sticker down at the bottom says shenanigans so yeah that's where that little quality time sticker is going to go and I love how it fits right there in between my two heads I sound like a monster. Uh, I'm also going to pull in these little crystals. I used these on another layout last month and they are amazing. You can find them in the store. They are the perfect little blingy bling to add to your layout and each color comes in three different sizes and I'm using this darker blue color. It's a perfect match. I'm going to show you here in just a second up close once I've got them all glued down but they sparkle and shine and they kind of reflect different colors and when they sparkle in the light they kind of reflect the lilac color see right there I love those I love those little jewels they're perfect I want to use them on everything <laughs> they're so cute so the last thing that I was trying to figure out was where to put my journaling I didn't want to I want it let me rephrase I wanted to leave the white space between where the watercolor ends and my bottom cluster begins. I wanted that white space left open, so I added the journaling right there where you see it. But anyway, that's the final layout. I love how this turned out. I love the background. I was expecting it to not work, but when it did, I got so excited because I love those runny flowers. Like I said, it looks like I stamped a lot and then left my layout in the rain, and it just kind of made the flowers start to, to bleed around. And I think that's so cool. I love that effect. So if you like messy mixed media backgrounds and you're looking for a new idea, something to do, maybe something that you haven't done yet, highly recommend this. This was a lot of fun. I um, definitely want to do it again. And these Pink Fresh Studio ink pads worked great. I didn't use 
any actual watercolors on this layout. All ink pads worked great, so highly recommend. Uh, but anyway, I took a ton of detail shots here. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to link all the products that I used down below, all of the dyes, the stamps, the inks, all of that good stuff, so you'll be able to find that in, this, in the Pink Fresh Studio store. And I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time.